Uh, we've already heard a bunch of times from both Chad and Chris about media servers. Uh, that's kind of our business, although I would actually take it a step further and say that we create a, a media server platform so that the it can scale. So a media server can only handle so much, right? Um, but we have a clustering cloud-based solution that allows you to just get huge scale. And our, our main thing that we're focused on not is broadcast, uh, but the type of broadcast that we're doing is um, enabling live interactivity with it. Um, so th things you can think of with this are like a live chat going on with a, a live stream. Somebody is streaming live and then people are telling them, hey, hey, put that on your head. And then, you know, he does it or whatever, you know. Um, that kind of thing doesn't work if you have a ton of latency. And um, what we're doing is a live low latency streaming platform um, we aren't hosted. We actually are hosting agnostic. So you can deploy our software on top of AWS or Google Compute Engine or what have you, um, and it'll auto scale on top of that stuff. So that's kind of part of our um, philosophy behind it. And we essentially see ourselves as a real-time CDN. Um, and the funny thing about that is we partner with CDNs like Limelight uh, to allow them to deploy our software on their network as well. That's it for the sales pitch. I just wanted to let you guys know what we're doing and kind of give you some context to um, all of this craziness that we're doing. And to give you some of the ideas of use cases around such a thing, um, if you were gonna deploy it, uh, live auctions. If you're selling uh, art online, for example, like Sotheby's does, if you're bidding on an item, you don't want that item to be uh, off by like 30 seconds in the video stream, right? Let's say it's a, uh, I was using this example earlier today. Let's say it's a Jackson Pollock painting, right? Um, and the next item for bid is a, uh, a water canister from the 1930s. The guy bidding on the Jackson Pollock doesn't wanna be all of a sudden bidding $5 million on the uh, water pitcher that comes up, you know what I mean? So that would, that would be a lot of problems. And so the, the synchronization between the video and the data actually has to be quite um, quick. And especially when you're dealing with things like people calling in live at the same time, you know, that, that also presents real world uh, kind of scenarios with the live stream that really need to make it within like half of a second. Uh, other things are like live fan engagement where you can get uh, almost like an interview going on uh, during the uh, stream. Um, so we had an app called the Arab Idol. It's basically like American Idol that you guys are probably familiar with the show, but for the um, Middle Eastern market. And they were basically making it so that the, um, the judges on the show and, and the celebrities in the show could actually go online live with their iPhone or Android device and then pick a caller who are other people using the app and then be able to have that live communication. And everybody else in the whole world uh, who's watching this thing can actually see that two-way conversation. I like to think of this as like, um, uh, it's like uh, talk radio, but with video, you know, a kind of a modern version of that. And then I've already mentioned the whole concept with live chats. Live chats uh, with video are becoming kind of ubiquitous. I think this is a, just such a normal thing for a live broadcast. And so if you're 30 seconds off from when uh, you actually see that video come in and you're trying to, to chat with somebody, it's just the disconnect is so far off and it, it really screws up the whole ex user experience. Uh, another one is live sports. Uh, horse racing is kind of an obvious one because you know they, that happens so quickly that the, the whole race is probably over by the time you get the stream. Uh, and if you're a gambler or something and you're betting on it, that's, gonna, um, that's not gonna be good for you. Uh, but even like kind of more subtle things, like if your buddy's texting you that, you know, the Patriots scored a touchdown and you're watching the stream on your iPhone and you're on an HLS stream, which is another protocol other than WebRTC, and that's taking 30 seconds for it to show up, your buddy's already goading you that his team, the Steelers, already made the play uh, and you haven't seen it yet, you're kind of um, pissed off about that. So we, we're seeing all kinds of use cases like that where that really matters. And so real-time uh, interactions are really uh, important. And then real-time can actually uh, start to get into some interesting areas too where we wanna actually process the stream. 
and do that in low latency. And so one of the things that we're playing with is this, is this new uh, component called Cauldron. Um, and it basically is a node that sits in and can do things like transcoding, face detection, and a whole lot of other stuff. So um, it processes stream in real time. It loads native libraries um, of your choice. That's kind of the key thing. So if you have a C library that you want to use, uh, you can actually load it in and call methods from it to do specific work. But some of the obvious things to use are like OpenCV or um, FFmpeg or libAV uh, to manipulate the streams in real time. Um, and then you can create your own uh, basic what we call potions, which are like these little functions that allow you to build and process the streams in real time. And then um, you can split that into, you can take a single stream and split it into multiple, and then you can do the opposite, which is take a lot of streams, um, like in an MCU type function, and then combine it into one. So maybe you want to create like the Brady Bunch effect, right? So why would you care about this? You can build AR experiences, which is one of the things we're going to kind of show, like live face detection and masking. Um, you can do real-time adaptive bit rate streams. Um, which means that you can actually create multiple streams in different um, uh, qualities so that people can subscribe to lower quality ones in real time. Um, you can kind of create the MCU type format, which we were just talking about. Um, and then, like I said, you can do all kinds of image recognition stuff with this. Um, and so I wanted to show you our mask uh, implementation. Let's see if we can kick this off. Oh no, there we go. So what I'm going to do is open up uh, a web page uh, right here and then hit broadcast on my iPhone. And luckily Apple added uh, WebRTC pretty recently so that we can actually access the camera and stream it out. So I'm going to name the stream ASD because that's the magic thing that knows to use the face masking and start subscribing to it. So it's got me going here. You can see this capturing video right now. And then let's go over to subscribe to this guy. Hopefully everything works. It, it is a demo, right? Demos never work. I must have named the stream wrong. Hold on. Oh, that was right. Don't tell me I have to open up the console and see what's going on. Andy, is it working for you? I'm looking for your stream. Looks like it's the right name. But I'm not getting playback. Yeah, me neither. Okay. Well, our demo doesn't work, which was the whole point of this. And it was working earlier. This is pretty funny. Andy, you mind restarting the server real quick? Let's just see no, what... not at all. Just give me a second. Yeah, this is pretty early code, uh, especially with this face detection stuff. So we might have a memory leak in there or something else that screwed everything up. So we'll keep going. Um, in the meantime, any questions about what I'm talking about? Because um, this is kind of weird, obscure stuff. It's all SDP's fault. It's <laughs> SDP's fault. I, I, can, I can vouch for, uh, for, for Chris. I, he, he did a demo on me earlier and it worked. <laughs> I, I, we'll take some questions. Actually, I had one question maybe before you start. Yeah. Um, a lot of the AR applications that work with live streams today or mm -hmm. do that locally on the device. Yeah. What are some of the advantages of doing that server side? Yeah, that's a great question. So you, you do have the choice of actually capturing the image at the device and then manipulating it there. One of the advantages of doing it on the server, though, is that. What's that? Oh, okay. 
Um, just grabbing the extra mic. Now, one of the advantages of doing it on the server is that you can use a pure browser implementation. Um, like, you can't really run OpenCV, for example, in the browser. Uh, but you can on the server. So you can actually capture that on the client side just in a straight browser and then push it off to the server. There can also be other use cases where you're doing a lot of processing and it's always going on. Um, and you want to maybe log those events. So let's say you're doing license plate detection um, for all the cars that are streaming by, um, like a utility camera just sitting there, like an IP camera. In that case, you'd really want that kind of processing done server side so that it can offload that. And then this dumb client can really be dumb, you know what I mean? Um, and then there are other use cases where um, uh, the reason we started building this, believe it or not, was for a client of ours. Um, they're a, a prisoner video chat system, all right, out of all things in the world. And they have these, like, kiosks that run in, in, the, in the prisons that, the, that those guys can use to then video chat with somebody on the other end. And that person on the other end is, just has a standard browser, um, like a, you know, Chrome or Safari or something like that. And in that case, um, it turned out that, the, that this application started becoming abused, um, kind of became like a sex cam for the prisoners. <laughs> so <laughs> they're like, we need to mask out everything but faces, right? OK, so we said, we can figure that out. And we did it. Uh, but the, the, the solution for this was to implement it on the server, because we never know what the clients are going to be connecting with. And um, it allowed us just to manipulate the streams in real time. They already needed a server there to do things like recording of the streams for um, evidence-based um, processing and other things like that. So there can be all kinds of reasons you want to do it on the server. And if you have a media server in place to begin with, um, it already becomes important uh, and, and much easier to do it there. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Chris, when you talked about real time in the auction example, yeah, um, how real time is it? I mean, I have, I'll give you the use case. I have a nephew who's got a garage band, him, him and three other guys. Yeah, he's moved away to Rochester. What's the point come where they can do a video conference where they can actually rehearse together? Yeah, that's a great question. And um, I'm a musician. Obviously, you saw Andy is too. I actually went to Berkeley College of Music, so I kind of know a lot. Of, about that and have thought about this use case. Unfortunately, um, in order to have that kind of experience without much um, you kind of have issues, latency. yeah, yeah it, you need about 30 milliseconds, and we're nowhere near that. Um, we're probably more in a range of about 300 milliseconds with video. If we take that out, you probably can get it down a little bit more, but you're still going to have that like kind of flanging effect, you know, like the drummer's going to hit a beat there, and then we're going to hear it here. And so, it's not there yet, but I think as, as connectivity gets better and we figure out ways to better improve the protocol, it could get there. Would it be possible to devote more bandwidth basically to the audio than the video? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Audio is much more possible to do it, yeah. And you could tr probably come up with a concept where you, you allow the video to kind of lag a little bit and then let the video be primary. I mean, sorry, the audio be primary, but yeah, I mean, it's still pretty difficult though, and you have to have decent internet connections. Yeah, I, I do know there was a, there's a couple companies actually working on that same exact work use case problem. I can't remember their names right now, but I, mm -hmm. I, can, I can find them. And, and in that case, you're also better off going peer to peer. So you don't need a media server for that. You'd be better off just going all the guys in the band going peer to peer, connected directly to each other, as opposed to trying to go out through a media server and back down. In our case, because we're usually doing one to many, like one to thousands or hundreds of thousands, like that, you really need that server to handle offloading it, because each client can't connect to that many streams at once. So, yeah. All right. Let's well, see if one more question, or do you want to, why don't you try again first? Let, let's see if it's working. Andy, any, any results for us here? You go ahead and play that stream as a subscriber. It's, it's working for my face here. Oh, right, we're going to see your face. Oh, lovely. <laughs> All right. And then we'll try it with my iPhone. We'll try it with my iPhone. Oh, yeah, there it is. Look at that. Spooky. I'm going to kill the audio there so we don't hear that awful screech. Yeah, I mean, that's not too exciting, but we're putting the Jason mask on his head. You can see the transparency is there. He can move around. That's super exciting. Let's see if we can try this with me publishing. You want to give it a shot, Andy? 
Okay, I stopped my uh, my streams. All right, cool. And I'm gonna kill this page altogether because it, maybe it's Safari got it. I mean, it, like uh, Chad said, Safari is early on with this. You know what I mean? Uh, so. Yep. <laughs> It's my fault for using an iPhone. I probably should have used Android for this, but you know. I'm watching the console this time, so. I, I like to live on the edge. Um, where's my history in this stupid thing? Um, what's that? Yeah, it's a pretty simple open CV one. Yeah, with a. What? Oh yeah, yeah. We we purposely made it only pick one one uh, face at a time. So. <laughs> it takes the first one it finds. Um, but the truth of the matter is, you could do whatever you want with it. This is intended as pretty much an example. Uh, crap. All right. Do you want to uh, take a question while you're playing with that? Sure. Sure, let's do it. It was a... What you got? So, well, Chris, I was just... I'm over here on the left. You probably can't see me. Yeah. Um, this kind of goes along with Chad's question, uh, just around um, offloading to the client. So from the research I've done with MCUs, and I think this exists with Hangouts as well, and I'm curious how you guys handle this, um, the whole simulcast concept where instead of doing the transcoding on the server, the server simply receiving all these streams and then letting the client do the Brady Bunch window, for example, mm -hmm. and there's no transcoding, so a lot less processing and computing needed to do all that. Do you guys do that? Um, right, yeah, so this this uh, cauldron piece could be used to create that uh, uh, Brady Bunch effect and combine tons of streams. So the, the thing is, you can do it where every client is connecting um, to another stream, and you can get away with probably about eight um, of those. But eventually, if you're trying to do like 20, 30 streams and then stacking them all up, it's going to break down. So you really need to combine it into one just so for bandwidth if, alone. So in this example, I, I can see that because you're you're modifying the stream. But yeah. in a case where you don't need to modify it, right? Do, do, is your does the media server that you guys created support that off the shelf? Off the shelf, I guess is the question more specifically. To, does it, to, does to, it support the MCU stuff off the shelf? No, uh, the SFU. Select yeah, it does. Yeah, I mean, that's basically what it does. Yeah, it, it's a lot like Corento in that sense or um, any of those other ones. Um, but we can also do it at scale. I mean, our main focus really is on the one-to-many kind of thing, but you could create the kind of video conferencing stuff with our platform. And, and where there's no transcoding happening on the server, it's just collecting the streams and sending them along? Yeah. Cool. Thanks. You're welcome. All right. You want to give your demo? We're going to give try. a demo uh, here, and then this is going to be it. You're running out of time, so I'm going to have to do the, the big hook pretty soon. I know. All right, so Safari is just not working, I guess. Andy, you're not seeing it either, are you? Yeah, it ran for a second, but then Safari did something. For me. All right. Yeah, well, you saw it coming from Andy's face, so we're going to have to All right. Well, you saw it coming from Andy's face, so that was at least something. Um, the other thing I can do, too, is it's not quite as exciting but I could do it from my laptop, but who cares? You've already seen Andy do it. So, um, and of course, with anything that we do like this, um, it, I mean, this is the technical piece of it. Do we have time to go through that or? Um, Fortunately, no. Okay, so we'll post these slides and then you guys can ask me questions later uh, about it, all right? Um, and my contact information is here. You can find me at Mr. Chris Allen on Twitter and uh, RedFiPro.com, uh, Chris at RedFiPro.com, and Andy at, Andy at RedFiPro.com if you need to get a hold of this, all right? Thanks, guys. Sorry uh, that our demo did not work correctly.